All right, so this rock behind me here is the like the highest peak between um, my base camp and where my state camp was. Um, to me, this kind of marks, I, I like kind of promised myself I was gonna climb to it because it kind of marks to me where like the last of the uh, major effort has to come through um, before um, before this whole journey is done. I mean, it's been it's been pretty wild. Um, we got we got four caribou between the two of us and a wolf, you know, as a bonus, which is pretty cool. And you know, here's the thing. Um, I don't I don't want anybody to get kind of led astray as far as like, well, you can just come out here and you know get something every day that you're hunting. I mean, we did, but we spent more time um, climbing. Uh, in and out of where we could hunt than we did actually hunting. Um, all in all, I mean, we we left home on Saturday. We spent two days driving and a whole day packing out. That's three days just getting in position. And we spent three days hunting, to be fair. We spent Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday hunting. Um, but we're going to spend, we, or we have spent, a whole day just packing out meat, um, a whole day just packing out the trophies and extra gear, and then we're gonna spend today um, packing out the last of our camp. You know, um, we had to um, keep our liquid water in thermoses um, and boil them frequently, uh, regularly. Um, I didn't want to go more than three nights without boiling the water. And, you know, um, it's gotten down into single digits frequently. And with the wind chill felt like, um, you know, below zero um, well, Fahrenheit. <laughs> Just for anybody watching this that uses the metric system. Um, and... You know, here's here's the other thing. I, I mean, I don't want anybody to have worried about me either. I just want you to be prepared if you do come out to do this kind of stuff. Um, we had negative 35 sleeping bags. We had um, a lot of clothes. I changed thermals um, every single day to make sure that I had clean, dry stuff. Um, I kept one set of thermals like uh, and sweats that I slept in, as well as a hat that was just for sleeping. So that I never had to worry about it getting wet or sweaty or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I don't want anybody to worry about me. I don't want to have worried about me while I was out here. Um, I knew what I was getting into. I knew what the temperatures were like. Um, and you know, if you, if you have to imagine anything, um, you know, me being out here, you know, don't think of me as like, you know, some kind of killer or anything like that. Um, imagine me more like a sea otter. Right, um, because I spent more time brushing snow off of me and grooming myself and you know keeping things dry or whatever. So, if you imagine like a little sea otter out there, you know, pruning themselves a bunch and then just hanging out on their back and keeping their hands and feet out of the cold water to keep their hands and feet warm, that was me while I was out here. Um, <laughs> the spirit of the sea otter. <laughs> Uh, that's that's what I felt like, you know, I was like, I spent more time, you know, cleaning myself and cleaning camp and, you know, doing things like that than I did um, hunting, um, you know, or or even, uh, you know, quartering up animals, cleaning them, that sort of stuff. Um, there's a really beautiful view because today actually has some sunlight, which is really amazing. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I got the shot of this. Uh, we decided... I decided at a certain point um, to keep using the same trail. Um, we got about uh, 8 to 12 inches of snow one night and decided to um, bust out the um, snowshoes, which have worked amazingly. Um, but we decided to keep using the same trail over and over and over again um, for hauling out the meat, for hauling out extra gear, for hauling out... You know, anytime we went back empty, even um, there was one day that I actually um, stacked both the empty sleds and all of our, you know, backpacks and stuff just to basically um, 
create a more weight and dig a deeper part of the trail so that it wasn't just like, you know, empty out here. Um, yeah, I mean, this, but this is my, this is my view. You can see the trail that we've made, you know, over and over and over again, you know, going on it and the mountains and everything. Um, the mountains that you see here with all the, you know, the dark rocks and everything on them, those are actually on the other side of the Dalton. Um, and that's, uh, kind of nice to see that, okay, those are the mountains and, you know, that's how much further, you know, until we actually get to the road and everything. Um, well, listen, um, now that most of the work is done, I can, you know, relax a little bit. We still got to get to base camp. Um, we still got to decide if we got time to, uh, tear down base camp and then head to Coldfoot, see if there's lodging there or not. Um, my wife tried calling yesterday and she said nobody answered the phone. <laughs> Pretty typical. Um, but uh, if not, then we're going to stay the night at base camp and then drive to Fairbanks uh, tomorrow. Um, I don't like to drive on the Dalton at night and I have no idea the condition of the roads after we got all that snow. Uh, wish me luck. Hopefully we can get this done and get it done safe.